The Gospel this morning is from the book of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 23 to 32. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowds for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not, but later changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. One Sunday morning, Timmy was listening to his Sunday school teacher's lesson about Noah's Ark. His teacher cheerfully said, I'm going to describe something to you. Let's see if you can guess what it is. I am furry with a bushy tail and I like to climb trees. I also like to eat nuts, especially acorns. The children looked at her blankly. The teacher then added, I'm usually brown or gray, but I can be black or red. More silence. Finally, little Timmy spoke up. I know the answer is supposed to be Jesus, but it sure sounds like a squirrel to me. Every day we are faced with questions, dozens of decisions, yes, no, maybe. Our daily lives are filled with questions, big questions, little questions, mundane questions, and major life questions. Questions such as, what to have for dinner? Where to go on vacation? Who to vote for? And difficult medical decisions for ourselves and those that we care for. Our gospel reading this morning is full of questions too. This story comes just after Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem on a donkey. He did not arrive quietly, but was surrounded by crowds shouting, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then this procession headed straight into the temple where Jesus drove out the vendors and welcomed people in need of healing, as well as children who cried out, Hosanna to the son of David. The religious authorities were not amused. From their point of view, Jesus was an insolent, false prophet who was upsetting the status quo. Not only that, but he had convinced the crowds that he was the Messiah. This was blasphemy in the minds of the temple leaders. The chief, the chief priests had had enough. They approached Jesus and asked, what right do you have to do these things? Who gave you this authority? Their questions were designed to entrap Jesus and undermine his authority. Jesus responded to their questions with an unanswerable question of his own. When they replied, we don't know, Jesus told them, then neither will I answer your question. I imagine that the crowds were listening in delight as Jesus began to tell the religious authorities a parable. This parable started with a question. What do you think? 
a man tells his two sons to go outside and finish raking up the maple leaves that are fallen all over the lawn. The first son says, no, I'm almost to the next level in Minecraft and I can't stop playing now. The man went to find his other son and asked him to go outside to rake the leaves. The second son says, sure dad, no problem. I'd be glad to do it. But he never does any of the work. Meanwhile, the first son starts thinking about his dad's request and decides that he can finish up his game later and goes outside and rakes up the leaves. Which son did the will of the father? They answered, the first, the one who changed his mind. So Jesus said to them, well, let me tell you something. The drug dealers and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. After all, John the Baptist came to show you the right path to take. And you would not believe him, but the drug dealers and prostitutes believed him. Even when you saw their changed lives, you did not believe them or change. This parable is not simply a contrast between a good brother and a bad one. Both fell short of the father's wishes. The first son eventually went to the vineyard, but only after experiencing remorse and a change of heart. The first son experienced a remorseful transformation, just as the tax collectors and prostitutes were transformed by Jesus. This parable teaches us that we all fall short. What matters is our willingness to be transformed by Jesus and to change our hearts, minds, and lives. The good news is that Jesus keeps the door open. The invitation to change our hearts and minds is always present. No matter what path we have chosen or how far down we have traveled, God's invitation to join his divine mission and participate in the work of building God's kingdom is forever open. Imagine that the kingdom of God is a big building. In order to build a big building, a lot of scaffolding is needed. The scaffolding is the outside framework that supports the building until it is done. In this illustration, what we are participating in the building is the kingdom of God, where God's justice reigns and loving and serving our neighbors is proclaimed and practiced. The scaffolding is the church with all of its traditions, large and small. It is what supports us in our work. This scaffolding can range from the important things that help us to grow our faith, the creeds that we profess, the prayers that we share, the way that we teach and study scripture, to the plentiful small bits of scaffolding. When and how do we worship? Which hymns do we sing? When do we sit and stand? What color is the carpet? The temptation is that we get so focused on the scaffolding that we neglect to build the building. In general, the church is good scaffolding. It is sturdy and strong, just like scaffolding should be. However, scaffolding also needs to be flexible and adjustable. We need to be able to reshape the scaffolding in order to be able to continue to build the kingdom of God. Sometimes the scaffolding gets moved without any input from us. Pandemics, hurricanes, earthquakes, or fires can dramatically rearrange our scaffolding. That can be disconcerting, especially if we've lost track of the purpose of the scaffolding. In 2020, our scaffolding has been moved a lot. We may be in a hurry to reassemble the scaffolding so that it is exactly the way it was before as quickly as we can. In our hurry to return to normal, we may forget to listen and watch for God's guidance and urging. Change to our scaffolding may be the gift of this year of weirdness that allows us to rearrange and refocus on the work of building God's kingdom. This leads us back to those questions. What change of mind is God calling us to? How is God challenging us to reset our priorities and rearrange what is most important to us? 
How are we being called to serve our neighbors and continue to build the kingdom of God? The good news of the gospel is that we can say yes to God because God first said yes to us. God said yes to humanity when Jesus came to bring his forgiveness and redeeming grace to the world. As a church family, we can help one another to listen more carefully to the Holy Spirit's urging and encourage one another in the ways that we say yes to God. Like little Timmy, we know the answer is Jesus. Now, what questions are we being called to ask? Amen.